terrible things are happening in three of the world's biggest cities. Mysterious fires have broken out all across New York City. In Paris, ancient stone statues have come to life to terrorize its citizens. And in London, the people themselves are turning into horrible monsters. It's as if someone evil is imposing their will on the world. It looks like my visit to New York just became an investigation. Something is behind these fires, and I intend to find out what. People say there's a supernatural cause. They believe that a mythological creature is burning the city to the ground. The fires are constant, so police and firefighters are too busy dealing with them to find out who or what is behind them. Some people claim they saw a phoenix during one of the fires. But that can't be true, can it? It must be some sort of mass hallucination. I contacted the editor of the Investigative Times, a newspaper conducting an independent investigation of the fires. He agreed to meet me when he learned I was the famous detective Agatha. This looks like the newspaper offices, but what happened here? Oh, there's Eric Moore, the newspaper editor. Miss Agatha, I'm Eric Moore, the editor-in-chief of Investigative Times. I'm sorry, but I can't give you the info I promised. As you can see, whatever is causing these fires is targeting us now. All this time, I believed that the theories about the Phoenix were complete fiction. An anonymous informant sent me evidence of the mythical bird. But I didn't even have time to open the package when the Phoenix itself came crashing into the office. My beloved city is in grave danger. Please help us get to the truth behind this Phoenix, detective. Perhaps there's some evidence or clues left behind in the office. I'm sorry, miss. This area is dangerous. The structure was damaged and could collapse at any moment. Now, move along. Oh, you're a detective? And the editor gave you permission to gather evidence? Well, look around. But be careful and stay out here. Everything that survived is out here on the sidewalk anyway.
Watch out! Who are you? And what are you doing here? What were you thinking? I'm Lieutenant Liz Brooks, and I'm not letting any more civilians get hurt on my watch. I don't care who gave you permission. So you're a private detective. And so experienced. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. Thanks for joining the investigation. I should show Lieutenant Brooks what I've learned so far. An anonymous source contacted the editor with evidence about the fires just after the paper began investigating the Phoenix case. A mysterious stranger brought the editor undeniable evidence that the Phoenix was responsible for the fires and then hurried away. Immediately after the editor brought the package inside, there was an explosion. My guess is that the fire was time to destroy everything they had uncovered. Something doesn't add up here. There are reports of Phoenix sightings in places with no fires. Can you look into that? The address got smudged during the firefight, but hopefully you can clean it up enough to read it. Sorry to interrupt, but the fire is out, and we need to get back to the firehouse to prepare for the next call. The police and firefighters are finishing up here. I should get moving, too. I'm not sure this is the right place. Maybe that barber can help. Hello, miss. Can I help you? Are you here about the Phoenix? It seems to be on everyone's mind. Well, you're talking to the right person. I'll tell you where it was seen. But information isn't free. Look, I'm not asking for much. I'm sure the papers would pay me for the info. But I'll tell you everything I know if you help me advertise. I'm no artist, and you look like you know style. Make me some posters, and I'll give you a story. What do you say?
Excellent work! Now, do you see that warehouse? That's the place you're looking for. The guy that rents it goes in every morning and leaves every evening, sometimes carrying strange things. Nah, I don't know what he's doing. But a few days ago, there was a deafening explosion. I thought for sure that the phoenix was about to burn our neighborhood to the ground. I did see the phoenix, but there was no fire. The bird just disappeared. Then that man locked the doors and left the warehouse, as if nothing had happened. Anyway, that's my story. Here, let me give you something extra to thank you for the posters. Oh, it was just a dove. The room is filled with posters and magic tricks. The tenant is an illusionist, and this must be his workshop. Judging by his workshop, he's no stranger to chemistry. If he was trying to create an explosion, the damage to this room suggests he succeeded. Could this be connected to the Phoenix? I have to inspect the warehouse to find out who used it. This is no hobbyist setup. This is a functional laboratory. <gasps> is it me or did I just see the Phoenix? I need to collect some of this powder as evidence.
Ah, the train. Just in time. This is the hotel on the card. Houdini is supposed to be performing here. Ticket, please. I'm sorry, miss. I can't let you into Houdini's show without a ticket. If you didn't buy it yet, you still have a chance to win one. The ticket office is having a special drawing. The show has already started. I have to get inside. I might miss my chance to talk to Houdini afterward.
What luck? Congratulations, miss. Come on in. You still have time to enjoy the show. Stop the show. Mr. Houdini, you're under arrest on suspicion of arson. Come with me to the station. I'm sorry, officer, but I have another big performance coming up. Miss Agatha, I'm glad you're here. All of our evidence is pointing at Harry Houdini as our prime suspect. His fire shows are out of control. Unfortunately, Houdini has escaped. Have a look around here while I search the hotel. Magicians use all sorts of secret devices in their performances. If you can figure out Houdini's trick, maybe we can figure out where he went. It's Houdini! He's getting away! Harry Houdini, you're under arrest. I'm sorry, officer. Not this time. Agatha! Houdini chained me to the stairs and ran away! Help!
Houdini has been corresponding with someone. They share the results of their experiments, the fire powder, and the phoenix design. According to the drawings, Houdini assembled the wings to use in his tricks. Houdini designed each phoenix frame to burn to ash each time it appeared. I have to take a closer look at Houdini's dressing room. There must be a clue to tell me where he's gone. Going for the fire escape. I have to cut him off. This is the same powder from Houdini's lab. There's enough here to destroy a whole block! That symbol again! The Phoenix has already hit the newspaper office. The Statue of Liberty must be the next target! Houdini experimented with the Phoenix design in powder to find the perfect balance for his tricks. His accomplice used moderate amounts for publicity. His accomplice made sure to keep their secret hidden. When the newspaper investigation got too close, he made their office the Phoenix's next target. The places marked with the Phoenix symbol became the victims of explosions and fire. And the accompanying Phoenix sightings drew more attention to Houdini's fiery performances.
Houdini plans to perform his Phoenix stunt on the Statue of Liberty. He's going to put on a show and destroy the statue just like the building. We have to stop him. This is going to be dangerous. We need help. Agatha, please take my car to go after him. Find a way to keep him from performing at the Statue of Liberty until I get help. Houdini and his accomplice are getting away. Stop! Don't blow up the Statue of Liberty! I have to find a boat to stop them. I can't let them destroy the statue. A port officer can help me find a boat. Good evening, miss. Ah, Liberty Island is a popular destination today because of the magician show. The next shuttle boat should come soon, but it's the last one of the day, so don't miss it. Please excuse me. The international liner is due soon, and I have to prepare. I'm happy to take you to Liberty Island, but you'll have to wait a bit. Something is wrong with the engine. Well, bring me the tool bag if you'd like to help. It's on that baggage cart with the cargo I'm supposed to take on my next trip. Something happened to that boat. It's on fire. Help! Help me! Help! I can't get to the dock! Thank you. You saved my life. The fire blocked my way to the dock. I tried to get through the flames, but I burned my hands. Please find something to bandage them.
Thank you. That should protect my hands while they heal. I don't know how I'll fix the engine like this, though. I ordered parts for it, but they should have come in long ago. Maybe you can pick them up. Here's the invoice. Oh my, what happened while I was away? Captain, your hands. We need to get you to the hospital. I can take you. Do you think you can handle the engine, Agatha? Take the invoice for the parts I ordered. They should have come by now. I owe you for saving me, but if you get her fixed and take her out, do me one favor. Be gentle, eh? We don't have time to waste, but if you need to retrieve the captain's cargo, you can find it yourself. I'll open the luggage compartment for you.
It's Houdini and his accomplice. Are they... fighting? Now I see what you're really up to. I won't let you do this. You fool. No one can stop me. And you. My plans almost collapsed because of you two. You pay for this. Oh no! Help! Are you okay? You're a detective, right? Then I wish to confess. I'll tell you what I know, but please understand that I had no intention of causing this destruction. Someone named H.J. contacted me a few months ago and asked me to create and advertise an incredible show. He promised to organize an illusion nobody had seen before. A huge phoenix would appear and vanish throughout New York. I was so inspired that I immersed myself in rehearsals and experiments and put my trust in H.J. Unfortunately, I discovered his destructive plans too late. Don't think that I'm trying to excuse myself. I'm willing to accept my part in this. Thank you for your help, Detective. I'll settle things with Houdini. He shares some of the responsibility, but I don't believe he meant any harm. He gave us some evidence. His letters from this H.J. person. According to these, H.J. was supposed to return to Paris after setting fire to the Statue of Liberty. Paris is well out of my jurisdiction, but I know a private investigator there named Julius Dupont that can help you if you show him this letter. Good luck with your investigation, Detective. Good evening. I'm sorry, but I can't let you in without a pass. These are uncertain times, and the library has some rare, valuable books. Please come back when you have a pass. That noise. Get inside. Hurry. Phew. I don't think they spotted us. These attacks are getting worse. Sorry I haven't introduced myself. I'm Detective Julius DuPont, and you must be Agatha. Liz sent a letter. How can I help? Her letter mentioned that you're after someone dangerous. We'll find them, but I'm afraid we won't get anywhere until we do something about these gargoyle attacks. Help me figure out how to stop them, and we can find your criminal. We should start by looking for legends about gargoyles in the library's archives. I've misplaced my pass, 
but why don't you talk to the guard at the library while I look for it? If you can get him to give you a sample pass, we can make you a real one. Ah, back already? Do you have your pass? I'm sorry, but as I said before, I can't allow anyone to enter without one. You can check the form in the gift shop for a sample pass. Have a good evening.
Ah, you have a pass. In that case, welcome to the Paris Library. Well done. We're inside. Now to find a book about gargoyles. The librarian should be able to help us, but it seems there's no one on duty. I think it's the woman who works at the end of the hall and us. Maybe she can help us find what we're looking for. I'll look around while you talk to her. Good evening. It's nice to meet you. I'm surprised to see visitors at this time of night. Gargoyles? There is a book on gargoyles over here. I'm too busy to look for it, but you're welcome to grab it yourself. It's locked away in a section for rare books. You can take the keys on the staff counter. While you're there, could you bring me some other material from that section? In return, I'll tell you what I know about gargoyles.
Oh, I'm glad you found it. You must be looking for information about these attacks on our city. They worry me too. Here, this will help you open the book. I have to finish my work, but come back when you're done, and I'll tell you what I know about gargoyles. Monsieur Dupont and I believe the legends have nothing to do with the attacks. There must be a logical explanation for these living statues. Here's the address to my lab. If you can catch one of them, bring it there, and I'll examine it. That's a wonderful idea, Miss Arno. Your expertise could be just what our investigation needs. Agatha, let's ask around to see if anyone saw where the creature that attacked you was headed. I'll meet you in the square by the library entrance. We are all set. It's not the best time for sightseeing, but if you insist, Notre Dame is just around the corner. It's not the best time for sightseeing. It's not the best time for sightseeing. This is a great area for a walk. The park is just outside the Louvre. It's too bad the bakery is on the other side of the river, though. I get out less and less often because of the attacks. I've been chasing those creatures for a while now, but today is the closest I've come to catching one.
I've been chasing those. This is a great area. This is a great area. That gargoyle scared me half to death. I'm lucky to be alive. It's not the best time for sack. It's not the best time for I've been chasing those creatures for a while now, but today is the closest I've come to catching one. This is a great area. Look, our gargoyle is sitting in that tree. We have to be careful about this. We don't want it to get away or do something even worse. We could use a gun to fire a net and catch it from a distance. I have one, but the net is torn. Look around for something to fix it. I'll check the car. You did it! Okay, now fire the net at the gargoyle.
You caught one? Incredible! Hurry, bring it to the table. I'm glad to be of some help in this investigation, but I broke my magnifying glasses. I need them to conduct a thorough examination. Can you fix them while I start a cursory examination? Detective DuPont can hold the gargoyle for me. Here you go. Let's see. Interesting. There are screws here. Incredible. It's a bird in disguise. This poor bird. Who could have done something like this? The poor thing's eyes are badly damaged. There's a theory in the scientific community that it is possible to get into living creatures' minds using light flashes to hypnotize them. I wonder if someone is doing that to these birds. It makes me so angry. I've been working on flash technology myself, but just for cameras. 
I'm actually presenting my latest invention at the exhibition center today. Come to think of it, a few weeks ago, a stranger tried to buy my research. I turned him down and got some threatening letters for my trouble. Here's one of them. Do you think it could be related? A Parisian scientist named Elaine Arno helped with the investigation. We learned that the gargoyle was a bird in an elaborate costume. A flash of light damaged the bird's eyes and hypnotized its mind. Elaine, on the other hand, invented a harmless light for taking photos. Someone must be trying to frame Elaine for this, but why? A stranger recently offered to buy her research, but he sent her threatening letters after she turned him down this stranger be the one we're looking for? Is there a chance he's also the H.J. from the case in New York? He's interested in Elaine's invention, so we need to prepare for a potential attack at the exhibition. As incredible as it seems, there are undeniable parallels in both cases. Whoever you're pursuing could also be behind the gargoyle and the person who threatened Elaine. The criminal may try to steal the invention at the presentation. Elaine's flash technology is different and more powerful than what came before. If he was able to hypnotize a bird, Elaine's invention could allow him to hypnotize people. We need to get into the exhibition and find a way to catch him. We're here. The criminal may show himself soon so we should look around for a good place for an ambush. I'll blend in with the crowd to keep an eye on Elaine in case of an attack. See if you can climb onto the balcony of the adjacent building to get a better view of the stage. If someone tries to attack Elaine, you'll be the first to notice.
Good evening. My name is Elaine Arno, and I'm presenting my new invention tonight. It's him! We must catch him! Oh no! Elaine! We were right to expect an attack during Elaine's performance, but I didn't expect a bold, direct approach from the crowd. Unfortunately, the perpetrator used flammable powder, but at least that proves his connection to the events in New York. He stole Elaine's invention and escaped while I rushed to help her. She suffered because of his actions, and I did what I could to help her. The criminal used flammable powder to blind and distract us, just like the powder Liz mentioned in her letter. It all adds up, Agatha. This is your criminal. Elaine is unconscious, but I will try to bring her around. Can you put out the fire on the stage before it destroys any potential clues? Strange. The note is signed, Dr. Jekyll. But that can't be. He's been locked in a prison in London for ten years. Maybe H.J. is his accomplice on the outside. Anyway, I don't think Dr. Jekyll is in Paris. But you should go to London and talk to my friend, Inspector Lestrade. He was in charge of the Dr. Jekyll case. I'll write to him and ask him to meet you at the station. Now that this H.J. has the device... I think he's going to return to his accomplice. I'm going to stay here and help the police round up the rest of the gargoyles. Good luck, Agatha. I'm sure you can crack this case. Good evening, Agatha. My name is Gregory Lestrade. I have a taxi waiting, so I suggest we discuss your case in the car. I like your style, Agatha. You arrive from Paris and get straight to business. Well, Dr. Jekyll's arrest was one of my biggest cases. You can familiarize yourself with the details during the ride. As one of London's chief inspectors, I'll support your investigation as much as I can. Whoever this H.J. is, his reign of terror must be stopped. 
Wh why are we stopping? We're not there yet. Oh no. It's one of those apes. Be careful, Agatha. Stay down. Are you all right? Uh, the same can't be said about the car. It looks like our trip is going to be delayed. This has happened a lot in London these days. Crazed animals keep attacking people. Some people say that a curse is turning people into monsters. But others believe it's a virus. I'm actually investigating the case right now. Unfortunately, neither of our cases will get anywhere with the car in this state. It appears the driver got scared and ran off. But don't worry, I know enough about cars to fix it, as long as I have the tools. Maybe you could look around for some tools while I check the engine? Good evening. It's good to see you. This is Agatha, a detective from New York. We're here to question Dr. Jekyll. We suspect his involvement in an international crime. Hello, Inspector. I'd be happy to help you, but I'm afraid that Dr. Jekyll recently died of a heart attack. There's simply no way he's involved. I saw the body myself. We still have his things. You're free to inspect his cell and review his files here in my office. I have to begin my daily rounds, but you're welcome to look at whatever you need. Well, Agatha, I suppose our plans have changed. I can help you look around if you'd like. Maybe we'll still find something useful for your investigation.
I arrived in London, confident that meeting Dr. Jekyll would bring me closer to solving the case. But it turns out that he's not only dead. He wasn't a criminal. The real killer is his son, Hyde Jr., or H.J. He's guilty of a crime that happened ten years ago. And now he's stolen his father's research and Elaine's invention, and conducted dangerous tests with flammable powder. Hyde's crimes are a cocktail of revenge against the cities that ridiculed him. London should be his final target. He's going to combine his father's powder and Elaine's invention to hypnotize the town people. And all just to prove his unrecognized genius. Dr. Jekyll's son, Hyde, was behind it all. But he disappeared right after his father's arrest. These animal attacks around London may be connected to him and his experiments. As I recall, Dr. Jekyll's experiments tried to influence the minds of primates. And we were attacked by one ourselves just today. The London Zoo is the only nearby place where one could find those animals. I'll ask the warden some questions and then go to the police station and update my report. I think you should follow this lead to the zoo. Perhaps the employees know something. Good evening. I'm sorry, but the zoo doesn't accept visitors this late. Uh, my name is Catherine. I'd like to help you, but it's getting late, and the animals haven't been fed because the food supplier hit a delay on the bridge. If you help me feed the animals, we could finish in time for me to answer your questions. Thank you for your help. 
The zoo isn't involved in the attacks. We keep our animals safe, secure, and healthy. In fact, all of our primates are at the vet clinic right now. The new vet took them in for regular checkups. I can give you his address if that helps. The address should be in the ticket office. If you'll excuse me, I have to track down a raccoon that got out. There's never a dull moment. You can use the map on the information stand to find the way to the clinic. Ah, here's the vet's address. Oh, that must be Catherine's escapee. Hey, that's not yours, you little bandit. Get back here. Now where have you run off to?
My intuition tells me that the vet is Hyde himself. I need to inspect that clinic.
The chain of evidence led me to the veterinary clinic. When I got inside, I found a secret laboratory in the basement belonging to Dr. Jekyll's son, Hyde Jr. Hyde's journal entries confirm that he's behind the incidents in New York, Paris, and London. I even found apes in the lab that appear to be subjects of his evil experiments. This case is more serious than I even imagined. Hyde's real goal is to control people's minds. It's up to me to stop Hyde and save everyone who has suffered at his hands, including the apes. I'm surprised you've come this far, Agatha. Yes, I know who you are. I tried to confuse you with the letter in my father's name in Paris. I thought you would drop the case when you found your prime suspect dead. But it seems I underestimated you. At least it bought me enough time to finish my device. Now, you will be one of my test subjects. Say goodbye to free will, Agatha. Get off me, you cursed ape! What happened? Where's Hyde? 
It looks like the apes escaped as well. I didn't get a chance to thank them. Hyde chose a good spot for his ambush. He'll have time to use his device on me if I attack him directly. I'll need a distraction. And I bet the bells might be just the thing. It's over, Hyde. Step away from the machine. You again? You'll pay for this!
When I arrived in New York, I never expected the case to take me across the ocean to Paris and London. Inspector Lestrade arrested Hyde, and his invention will be destroyed because of the danger it poses. Another case is closed, and I can finally get back to normal. I wonder how my cat Lester is doing. I hope he misses me.